These are my tools for making great PS2 tutorials. Let's do this. Hey guys, this is Versatile from Project Phoenix Media. We got a really great PS2 related tutorial today. We're going to showcase how to use the TP-Link wireless travel router or nano router and use that to share PS2 games from a USB connected to the router and then connect through Ethernet to your PS2, share PS2 games over SMB to your PS2 that's using OPL and Freemink Boot to play your games at full speed. It's an awesome network solution. It's portable. It loads the game quick. No additional computer required once you got everything set up. It's a great way to enjoy your games. So let's do this. So I will reference this particular video tutorial in future follow-up tutorials. So this video will be a little bit long. In the video description, I'll have appropriate timestamps for certain sections if you want to skip around. Okay, so the very first thing to get out of the way, which is the simplest, is we're going to assume that you have a USB stick or USB hard drive that's ready to go with all your favorite PS2 games. If you don't know how to do that, go to the PS2 playlist. I have dedicated videos that showcase that stuff. But in a nutshell, here's an example of my USB thumb drive, and it's format as FAT32. You can also use NTFS uh, file structure with your TP-Link router, which is awesome as well. But for my purposes, I have FAT32 thumb drive. I have one game here, Tekken 5, that was converted using USB Util 2.0, or you can use USB Extreme, which basically splits the files when you're larger than 4.4 gigabytes, for example, and it saves that on the root of your USB device. Likewise, if you have an ISO file that's about 4 gigs or less, you can put the ISO file in the DVD folder, and then you can use a program called OPL Manager to rename the file names, make it pretty, get your cover art, and have a lot of good times. So that's how your USB setup is done. Like I said, if you want a more slower, full-blown tutorial, see the PSU playlist. I got a lot of good videos on that subject. So I'm going to eject this PSU thumb drive and connect it to the travel router. One second and get that out of the way. So let's continue with the rest of the tutorial. So I have reset the router default setting. So we're going to start this is totally from scratch. Let's assume you know nothing and we'll get you from A to Z. Pretty simple here. So on my computer, I am searching for Wi-Fi networks. So when you use this TP link, it's going to broadcast a 2.4 gigahertz network and a 5 gigahertz network. On my particular computer setup, I have a setup to only detect the 5 gigahertz network. But in general, it may be called like a TP-Link underscore D26E. And then for the 5G network, it's going to say underscore 5G. So in my particular example, the 5G network is showing. On my phone, I can see the 2G network and the 5G. So I'm going to go ahead and connect to the 5G. And it's going to ask you for the password. Well, the password is actually listed on the bottom of the TP-Link which is, in my particular case, a bunch of um, numbers. So I've done this before on my computer, so I believe my computer will know what that password credentials are. If you're doing it for the first time, go ahead, look on the bottom of your TP-Link router. There's a little barcode sticker thing, and it'll tell you what the Wi-Fi password is. So go ahead, enter those digits onto your laptop, onto your computer, and then momentarily you'll be connected to a network, and it'll say no internet, which is perfectly fine. Okay. And another thing you want to do is on your TP-Link, there's a switch on the side of it. Put it to the very lowest position where it's the client mode. And um, we'll talk about that again when we go over to the PS2 on my TV. So in the meantime here, you got the switch, client mode, great. Open up your favorite browser. And here, if you don't know what your IP address is of the TP-Link, you can do this, tplinkwifi.net. And you can do it again. And there we go. So the default username and password is admin, all lowercase. If you wish to change that, by all means, go ahead and change it later for security purposes. But for this video, I'm going to leave it the same. So let's go through the quick setup start. Or you can go here, quick setup, and say next. And here you say client, say next. Here it's going to search for all your networks. This is how I do it. If you have this particular router and you have different methodology, by all means, leave a comment in the video uh, YouTube section. And I'll be interested in what you guys are doing as well. So here, I'm just going to connect to one of my networks here. And I'm going to connect to my 5 gigahertz network because I can. So let's do that. Entering your Wi-Fi password on your main network. Click on Next. 
Here, if you want to, you can set a smart IP with DHCP. I like to make everything static. So for purposes of this tutorial, for simplicity, I'm going to static IP route. If you are more advanced in networking terms and you want to do DHCP mode, by all means, go ahead. But I'm going to do static IP. And here, I'm going to change my IP address. Now, on my particular router, it's like the 10.0.0.x series. Your router might be different. You might be a 192.168.1.x or a .0.x. So go ahead and make sure your TP-Link is the same kind of router subnet as your main router, basically. In my particular case, I'm going to give it a static IP address, and I'm going to give it a high value, which is 99. I know that address is not used already on my main router. The, to double check, you can go ahead, log into your main router, see the list of your network attached devices, and then go from there. This helps save some time. We're not going to go over that in this particular video, but um, that's what you want to do. Basically, set IP address static, and that's um, you, something you want to do. And on DHCP server, you can say enable, disable. I don't think this really matters, but um, I'm going to have it uh, enabled for now. Well, let's do disable. I don't think it really matters in the end. It probably works either way. So go ahead, click on finish. And then here the system will reboot. To help save some time, I will uh, fast forward and cut ahead. Okay, so the router has fully reboot and we get this screen. So now what you wanna do is go ahead, connect to your main network. My computer automatically did it by itself. And I'm gonna go ahead and type in the static IP address that I assigned my router. So in my particular example, it must, this might be different depending on what your network configuration is, is 10.0.0, oops, 0 0.99. Great, so here we go to admin, admin, change the password and all that stuff you wish later on. Now on the left-hand side, what we're most interested in is the USB setting. So like I said, I have my USB, it's ready plugged in to the TP-Link router and it automatically recognized it. So file systems, you know, supports a bunch of different file systems, actually two, FAT32 and NTFS. So in my particular example, I have FAT32. If you want to do NTFS, by all means, go ahead and do that and plug it in. It looks like this, basically. And if it's not active, I think you can just click on active and you can activate it. So that's step one. Second step is, I'm just going to go through these different settings here, is go to user accounts. So what I'm going to do here is, this is totally arbitrarily, but I want to change the first one, or I can add a second um, username. Let's do this, index2. We're going to call it guest, all capital letters. And the password, you can call it whatever password you want to use because that's the password we're going to use on the PS2. In my case, I'm going to do 11111. So five number ones, one, two, three, four, five. Click on set. And that's enabled. Okay, that's good. So we have a guest. Okay. This becomes important because when we log into the PS2 under the OPL network settings, we're going to use a username as guest, all capital letters. And then the password is going to be 11111 or five digits of number one. Okay, next is the storage sharing. So here, mine is set as enabled. And I think, uh, I don't know if it really matters too much. I'm going to uncheck this actually. Yeah, this is what exactly what you want to do. So you have that unchecked. And then down here, we're going to delete this. Delete the selected. Now what we're going to do is add a new folder. Here is what we call PS2 SMB, capital letters, and then click on browse and choose your volume, which is the root of my USB thumb drive. This is what my structure looks like. And here down here, I'm going to say full access for the guest and say apply. Okay. And just in case you don't have to, but I'm going to double check it. Uh, I'm going to check this box here, say enable selected, say apply, and we're good to go. And there's nothing else over here. You no, know, this is FTP stuff. Here's the media stuff. All that stuff does not matter. So now all you need to do is you're good to go. So when you power down your router or turn your router on the next time, all these network settings are saved with your USB plugged in. It will automatically share your root of your USB thumb drive. It will be recognized as PS2 SMB to the PS2. So now all you need to do is literally connect the USB to the router, connect the router to the PS2, turn on the PS2, go into LPL, set up your network settings appropriately, and then all your PS2 network games will show, and you're ready to have a lot of good times. So with that said, let's jump in straight into the next portion of the video tutorial showcasing my PS2 in action. Let's do this. All right, so let's do this. So here's my PS2 running free McBoot. Here's my TP-Link travel router. Here's the switch you put in the very bottom position, which is the client mode. 
connect your USB. So here is my PS2 games uh, shared through the router, through Ethernet to the PS2. Okay, so let's go back to the TV real quick here and we're gonna run OPL. Okay. Adjust this guy, sorry about that. Okay, so here to save some time, I already got the settings all working, but to recap how to do that, first what I like to do under settings here is set your Ethernet start mode to auto, and your default menu set to Ethernet games. As an example, say okay. Under network config, this is my settings, so here's off, auto, IP address, I have it as static. If you wanna do the DHCP method, by all means go ahead, but um, static works well for me. Here you can set your IP address for my router network, is 10.0.0.x. Yours might be 192.168.0.1, whatever it's gonna be, so go ahead, change it accordingly. Your mask is 255, 255, 255, For the gateway, just in case, I put the same IP address as my TP-Link router, which is 10.0.0.99. DNS server does not matter, keep it all zeros, it's fine. Under SMB server, for address type is IP. The address for the SMB server is the same address as your TP-Link, so 10.0.0.99. The port stays the same, your share stays the same, the default, which is PS2 SMB, or you can enter it if you don't have it already there. Your username, to make it simple, is guest in all capital letters, and then your password is whatever password you want. So in my particular case, it is five number ones, one, two, three, four, five, press start. So now what you can do is press reconnect. If all your network settings are good, you're good down here, basically, and then you can save your changes. Press circle. You're back in the main screen. Hopefully your games will load through Ethernet, which is this icon here, and you're good to go. If I press triangle, I do not, I can turn off all the game modes actually. So let me remove all the settings and verify it's off. Yep, everything's off, good. Save the changes. Um, I don't believe this game requires any modes enabled for Ethernet. It might if you require it on USB, if that works for you. That never worked for me but let's go ahead and go. So um, I have no special modes on, they're all disabled. We're running the game from USB, from the TP-Link, through Ethernet to the PS2, and this should be a lot of good times. All right, so we're in business. So the game is loading, and I've showcased this game before in previous videos. So if you've seen those videos before, you'll have an idea of how the performance is for this particular game, Tekken 5 PS2 SMB method. So let's go ahead and pick a random character here and showcase the greatness of the PS2. So we can clearly see it works great with the PS2, TP-Link, and the game share through USB over SMB. So that's today's video game tutorial with the PS2. If you guys have any nitpicky questions, leave a comment here on the YouTube page. I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Once again, thank you for watching. Take care. Bye.